<laughs> well, I just made a recording, and I looked at the time, and it was 17 minutes long. I went blabbing on for 17 minutes, all right? So instead of one big, long 17-minute recording, how about three short recordings? So first one, really, so the New Hampshire, the, the Plastic Temple Man is their man, huh? I say, again, it's because they have voting machines there. The one beautiful thing about this whole Ron Paul campaign is the fact that people are starting to realize that the vote is not secure. And it's not who, you know, who votes, it's who counts the votes. And enough Ron Paul people are out there going, what the heck, right? And in Iowa now, it's great. Look at some of the, you know, uh, posts and blog posts and, you know, videos that are coming to pass uh, on YouTube and so forth about, you know, they just blatantly stole that election. He had probably 50% uh, of the vote there, and they they made it into this improbable three-way 20%, 20%, 20%, three, right? Okay. So that's, see, it's not necessarily a bad thing because people are waking up to the fact that we need to secure the vote. The vote is not secure. You have the right to vote and you have the right to know that your vote was counted. And how many people can say you, you are for sure that you know your vote was counted? Or do you just trust that your vote was counted? It's a big difference between trusting and knowing. So we've got this uh, election going on, right? These straw polls, and unspoken is beautiful. Unspoken in all of this is why go to Florida? Why waste you know millions of dollars in Florida campaigning when you know that state is rigged? Right? They all hanging chads and this whole mainstream media spinning it like, oh, these people didn't know how to vote and they didn't know what they were doing and it was the electorate's fault and blah blah. No, it's rigged down there. Simple as that. And Gore, I mean, it's rigged. And so, let's see, Black Fox Voting, read what they have to say, right, watch the vote, all these different voting organizations. Florida's one of the worst places. Ohio doesn't do very well either, right? So, why go down there and spend a lot of money when you know it's going to be rigged? And they have a history of vote rigging, and it's blatant. Okay, so, number one thing to do if you want your country back is figure out how to get fair elections. We have a banana republic right now. We have theater in place of elections. Right? They're picking, right now as we speak, they're picking the GO candidate, GOP candidate for you. Right? <laughs> Doesn't matter who you want. They're, they're, they're going to tell you who, who's going to run against Obama. And see, people are starting to figure that out. And don't get disillusioned. It's time to make changes. Now that you see the problem, fix the problem. Right? Or we can keep going down the path that we're going on. So, you know, and that's again, don't become fey. Like, you're going to have to work ten times harder. We're going to have to put more people in front of, you know, where they can watch the vote. You're going to get better organized. And you're going to have to do it in advance. We need more and more people out there watching the vote, doing exit polling, and exposing this fraud. And then we need to enforce the laws. And see, this is the pro This is what most of these guys are afraid of. What if Ron Paul actually did get in, and he started enforcing the laws? <gasps> oh, then what? Right? The SNL scandal is peanuts compared to what's going on right now. Right? They're looting and looting, and nobody's prosecuting. Nobody's even investigating, much less prosecuting. What if Ron Paul got in there and started prosecuting? All these bankers would be going to jail. How many thousands of guys went to jail in the SNL scandal? Zero for this mortgage fraud and banking fraud that's going on right now, right? Credit fraud. Zero. None of them are going to jail. They've avoided it, right? We got a president that's saying, well, it might have been immoral, but it wasn't illegal. No, what they did was against the law. I mean, you know, and right now I still have the ability of free speech and I can contradict the president out loud without having to worry about going to jail. Although people are telling me, you know, you're making these videos, you're going to get special treatment at the airport. Really, is that the country we've become? Right. Is that really the country we've become? Not that I doubt that, but I mean, is that where we are? And you people are so cynical that that's where you're at, and that's why so many people are silent when you should speak, because you're afraid that you're going to get special treatment. Really, is that where we are? I <laughs> mean, to say it again, then, you know, do you know how late it is, if that's where we are? <laughs> it's very, very late in the day. Now, 
I, I'm at the point, like I said, I'm just tired. I can't stand silent anymore. That uh, The racism thing is the thing that finally broke it for me. It's like, are you kidding me? But now, I mean, watching mainstream media just pretend like, we don't have a vote problem in the United States. Everything's dandy. Everything's fine. Go back to sleep. Everything's okay. Everything's not okay. Who's going to fix it? Them? No. Who's going to fix it? Us. They won't even report on it. So... You want your country back? You want to restore the republic? You want to restore the constitution? The main thing there is making sure that your right to vote is protected, but your right to know that your vote was counted is also protected. So you don't walk out of there wondering whether your vote was counted or not. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> Just straight talk. This is, this, this is not hard stuff, right? So easy a caveman can understand.